me try this one more time. A notification just popped up again and it cut off my video. I want to speak to Kwani. I did write it in German. So she could see exactly what you were saying in her language. Since she loves to study our language, our lingo, our slang, our music, our clothing, our culture, the way we sit up and read one another. See, she's intrigued by that. She's very intrigued by it. That's why every chat you go into, you see the German lady. We got to study them the same way they study us. Down to the food that they eat, down to their history, down to when the Neanderthal was on the earth, when the first intelligent white man came about. We got to really, really study them. I have a book that states that black children are 75 years behind in education. 75 years. And I believe that that's true because during slavery, we were not allowed to read nor write. We have got to start picking up books, not only about them, but about ourselves. We've got to understand Sankofa. You cannot understand who you are until you understand where you came from. I'm still on my stance with ice. I stood in Arizona and watched the rednecks get in their pickup trucks and drive to the fence and take their shotguns out and shoot women, men, and children that were trying to come here for a better life. That's what America is supposed to be all about. Not one person here in America is an original American. The Polish, the Irish, the Italian, the Greek, they all migrated here. For what? A better life. So if we gonna build a wall to keep the Mexicans out, then let's push out all the ones who immigrated here. Why are you singling out one race of people? Because nothing is going to change. Racism is still going to exist. It's just now you got rid of one race of people, so you can really focus on the ones you really want to get rid of. The Puerto Ricans don't like the Mexicans. The Mexicans don't like the Puerto Ricans. Divide and conquer. The blacks don't like the Mexicans because they taking our jobs. It's just a mess. The more people of color you have, the better chance you have of taking back what your people, my people, Built, which is this beautiful state called America. If we build it, if our ancestors did it, it belongs to us. Why are we not taking it back? Why are we not? Preparing the youth and political science. I'm going to say that again. Why don't we have a political party of our own? Why don't we have lobbyists 
to go to Congress and lobby on our behalf? What's stopping us from doing that? You have people in the industry that are billionaires. Let's take Oprah for existence. When she first came here, she was just your average black person with a little afro with Jerry Curl in it. And the audience consisted of mainly blacks. We watched her faithfully until she became nationwide. And that audience slowly started becoming white. And all the black people were pushed to the back. See, we, we got the money, we got the empowerment to change things. Yeah, communists coming here and taking all that area where the steel mills used to be and setting up a state-of-art school for black children. But what about buying neighborhoods? What about buying acres and acres of land what about teaching agriculture there's an agriculture school here but it's in the white neighborhoods not in the black neighborhoods so the ranch the original ranch and German lady look at us as a bunch of wild animals <clears throat> that every week is somebody talking about somebody <coughs> from talking about where they live how they live they live in the ghetto probably in her mind every black person live in the ghetto how much somebody makes what kind of job they have that sometimes I change the region on YouTube and I'll make the region into a all European region and I get to watch what they're putting out on YouTube that's why I make mine public because that means anybody that has YouTube is gonna see this video the reason why I went to YouTube studios is because a Sean Bradley's group decided to report my page and have it shut down. I think the only two people on here that's not monetized and don't wish to be monetized is Kwani and myself. And I don't agree with Brother Jay when he says we are all Google employees. No. Anytime they take 33 and a third of your super chat, you are a Google slave. Anytime they can dictate when to take your channel down, you are a Google slave. You do not work for Google. I, I don't know what people get in their mind that they do because every job I had I had to put in a resume I had to interview maybe with a supervisor then the manager and then I had to wait on that phone call to see if I got a job I took the little test because I felt if I made a legitimate YouTube page that the way people cuss and scream and holler, my page wouldn't get shut down so fast. I didn't even watch the videos. The damn questions a five-year-old could answer. That every, <laughs> and it's multiple choice. That I answered all the questions correctly. That's why people can leave comments in YouTube Studio. I never went beyond taking that little test 
and finding out how I can be monetized. I didn't care. But we've been studied real good. That's why they put all that junk food in our neighborhoods. They put all the liquor stores in our neighborhoods. I don't care how good or how bad a neighborhood is, you're going to find a Chinese restaurant. Over here, it's transitioning. The University of Chicago owns predominantly everything from the university all the way to 71st Street. And you can see a white student walking down the street and not one black person will touch them, approach them, or say anything to them. But let me get out the car with my black brothers and sisters. Oh, I'm going to be harassed. They're going to beg me for money. They're going to follow me in the store. They're going to sit outside by my car. If I had a top down, they damn near climbing in the car begging for money. Because they know our lives don't matter. That book, Alice in Wonderland, they used to be in the school system until they realized that it was a book about a little girl that took LSD. And she was sitting up hallucinating. And she was living in a world within a world, which is what we're doing. It's like SimCity. Download SimCity, the game. Play the game. You can make your own city. Your own, you can be your own governor, mayor. You can set the laws. You can decide on property taxes. You can budget. You can do all of that. And that's the world that a lot of us are living in. In Sim City. I've never heard of the black pill. It's something that I would like to look at and see exactly what they're talking about but this world you're living in now <laughs> you ain't seeing you're not seeing what's happening see we had an alderman here a female alderman Dorothy Tillman who built up the ghetto, which is now called Bronzeville, which has the Harold Washington Library. And when she found out that Chase Bank owned the most slaves and that they used the most slaves to build their banks, she made them do a public apology. And I bet you the majority of the people on here bank at Chase Bank. They had nerve to open up a branch in a black neighborhood, and you had to ring the doorbell, and only three people at a time were allowed to come into a bank. See, they were scared, but they wanted your money. And my sister happened to be there with her son to open up an account. When you open up an account, they normally give you a debit card right there on the spot. But because it was located in a black neighborhood, he was told that he couldn't get a debit card, that he had to wait. And just so happened, an alderman was in line behind my sister and heard the whole conversation. And that particular branch was blasted all in the Defender newspaper, along with my sister's picture and exactly what happened. My cousin's family owned the Defender newspaper. It was the only newspaper that reported on black crime, on injustice to black people. But see, when you have discord in your family and you got a piece of history that was started by my cousin's great-great-great-grandfather, Robert Abbott, who used the newspaper and got in with the porters, on the trains 
and got them to take that newspaper down south because the blacks were migrating to the north and he wanted to teach them how to speak, how to dress, how to act when they go into an interview because he knew they didn't know how to. But he had a relationship with the black porters and they would sneak the newspaper down south. Because we don't have black parade to celebrate black history, Chicago has the Polish parade, the Irish parade, the Mexican parade, the Puerto Rican day parade, and when the Irish parade comes around, they turn Michigan, the little Lake Michigan, the color green. All we have is the Bud Billiken day parade, which consists of cartoon characters, and it's supposed to be a celebration for children returning back to school. But something has happened to black people here in Chicago. I don't know if it's in the water, if it's in the air, or if we just become numb. We don't protest over anything. No one from any other city will come here and protest. Jesse Jackson, his name is Dirt here in the city because everything he did was to benefit his family. It was not to benefit your average black man. That's why he was told to go home when everything jumped off. When Eric Gardner got killed, they told him, we don't want you here, leave. And that's exactly how the youth feel about him here. So yeah, you got your whites sitting in the bushes, illegally taping you all, and setting up channels, and playing it back in their countries, and sitting up laughing, and talking about us, making fun of us. Oh, but they love our music. Oh, but they love our women. Oh, they just love our culture. Oh, they try to make ribs. They try to eat like us. So in order for this thing to turn around, because they predicted a long time ago, by 2025, the United States of America would be inhabited by more people of color than non-color. That's why they want to get rid of the Mexican. Not only have they overpopulated white people in California, they have also gotten seats in the government. And they never expected that to happen. See, they, they stick together. They vote for one another. We even had a, a rundown here in Chicago against Rahm Emanuel and a Mexican who was mentored by the first black mayor of Chicago, Harold Washington, who died in office. And he ran against Rahm Emanuel. And he ran until he had him in a runoff. And Rahm Emanuel wouldn't have never served another term had not the black alderman kept a secret about Laquan Davis, who got 16 bullets pumped in him by the police. They kept that a secret until Ron won that runoff. And the reason I was so upset about it is because my cousin was the president over the Black Caucus for the Alderman. The whole purpose of having a black caucus was to make sure that black people were treated fairly. And every black alderman voted 100% with Ron Emanuel. And who sent him here? Obama. Where did Obama come from? He was planted. Nobody in Chicago knew him. That seat should have gone to Jesse Jackson Jr. 
this is one of the most corrupt cities and one of the most politically corrupt cities and the most segregated city so when people talk about the south and how segregated it is come up here you would think you in the south but you north everybody got their own section so a German lady just feels like all the rest of the little white kids that buy all the CDs, that go to all the concerts, that sing along with all the artists, that dress like them. You even got on Love for Hip Hop. You got a white boy on here now saying he grew up in an all-black neighborhood so he can relate to black people. No, he can't. Pick up a book, two or three books. Then look at the map of Africa. Not today's map, but the first map. Look at how big the continent of Africa is, opposed to the United States. Look at the diamonds. You all don't even know when you go and buy a diamond. You're supposed to ask, is it compromised? If it's compromised, as a black person, you should not buy it. That means that that's blood diamonds. That means that women and children's arms and hands were cut off while they were digging in their own homeland for these diamonds. And I go into a diamond store and it's a black girl behind the counter and I ask her are these diamonds compromised and she tells me she don't know what I'm talking about and a diamond is not the rarest gem out there they tell you it is but it's not London keeps an underground container that's about 10 miles long, full of diamonds, full of diamonds. And they keep them down there so they can make people believe that it's a rare piece of stone. And they only release so much to the public. That's when you take the red pill and you start realizing that you've been fooled, you've been bamboozled. So, German lady, I put it in your language so you can fully understand. We are not a ghetto section. We are not Google employees. Google lets anyone that can answer questions that a third grader can answer have a channel. Google allows them to tear one another down. It's a form of genocide, of mental genocide, of hate, and they are allowing it to go on. They can stop it at any time they want to. They know what's going on. But they're letting it go on the same way they put guns on the street and they put drugs on the street. They know. And they promote it by putting recommendations. So you can see the barrel, the bottom of the barrel, just on here screaming and hollering and cussing about another vlogger and they call it content and we fell for it like we fall for everything else now we can sit up and we can talk 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 about racism about colorism or we can get up off our ass and get up off of YouTube and go to Google 
and protest at Google about all the things that they're allowing in this sector. I've been in the white sector. Yeah, they have beef, but they don't hit below the belt like we do. They don't do the things that we do. They don't call CPS out on people. They don't destroy families like we do. They don't sit up and scream and holler. And if they do have beef with one another, it lasts for a day or two, and then they accept that person back and continue to back them. Stop being bamboozled. We could talk about our revolutionaries. I watched Fred Hampton's apartment get shot up at about 5 o'clock in the morning when they was all sleeping in there and Mayor Daly ordered the police to raid that apartment and shoot that apartment up and kill them all up. See, they were the doers. They weren't the talkers. They were the doers. And they became so strong that they had to be gotten rid of. leave it like that other question. Are we going to stay in chaos or are we going to become a community? Are we going to still run in clubs and chats and cults? Or are we going to become a community? Where we support one another. Where we not doxing one another. Where we not recording one another. Talking about somebody else behind their back. And not man or woman enough to talk to them face to face. Because if I got something to say to you, I'm going to ask you what your address is, and I'm going to fly to you, and I'm going to look you in the eyes, and I'm going to ask you, did you say that? And what was your purpose? And how did it benefit you? And why are you so concerned about my life? There is so much happening out here in the world, you can't find nothing else to talk about. You can't talk about an eight-year-old that got shot in the head, sitting up in the front room of his house, watching TV. You can't talk about them driving on the expressway and shooting up cars. You can't talk about that Martin Luther King would work with the CIA. You can't talk about anything else but dogging another vlogger a hurt dog house because if it don't mean nothing to you it is not doing anything for your family not contributing anything to your family leave it alone Don't even respond. That's what they want you to. You giving them back exactly what they want. If anybody, they can thumbs down my video all they want to. Do you think I care? Do you think I'm going to get on here and rave and rant about that? I don't care that S. April is white. She's like that other white woman that wants to be black that they called out. She's got an inferiority complex. And I'm not a psychiatrist to sit up and dog her out because she doesn't like who she is. Just don't subscribe to her channel. Eventually she'll leave. Eventually, German lady will leave. And those that like her and don't mind her sitting up studying them, that's on them. Find your lane. Stay in your lane. 
Don't try to do a U-turn. Don't try to make a right turn or a left turn. Stay in your lane. Stay on point with what you're trying to get across. And enough people will start listening. And you may spark somebody's mind.